is the this is what it really spoke to me about when I was singing along to open your eyes in my car at the lights as someone's looking at me like, why is he so bouncy? Uh, <laughs> uh, I was, uh, the idea of, uh, I think, so I, let me start with this. I, I then started to wonder where the idea of the album came from, like this idea of the album. And this is, I'm going to, if you're hanging with me here for like two minutes, I'm going to outline what I found. Now, you may know all this already, right? So the term album was coined before vinyls came out. It was actually used in collecting. It was, it was borrowed from books and the idea of like a photo, a photo album collecting photographs in the in the late 19th century. So that was even before then the first record came out. This we would have um, before the the before the first vinyl that we think of as the vinyl the 33 and a third there was books full of of um, instead of photos an album of photos would be a foul, foul, an album of discs. And so that was where this album of discs this sort of idea came from. Okay. Then the album, the vinyl comes out in 48. Columbia's has the first successful 33 and a third long playing double-sided thing that we think of, the actual album. And then that was when we really started to think of the album historically as like a collection of songs in like a single package. So 48. And then after that, there's like, you know, singles and EPs in the 50s. And then we got stereo LPs and then cassettes and CDs and now the MP3. But it was kind of amazing to me that, when I was listening to your 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 record, as I call them, it really felt like a true record to me, like a record, and it was such a beautiful thing to feel like from start to finish. I was going on this this journey through these collections of songs, where there was a theme and there was there was a story that was happening, and I and, and you know somewhere that the writer and and the the performer has gone on this kind of journey through the record themselves in their life. It's a part of the story, and when I went back through this kind of history thing that the original term was a collection of memories packaged together, that kind of feels like it kind of all comes together the way that we pictured the album. And, and, okay. and I think we're getting further away from that, which is why rivers run dry felt special to me to enjoy because it seems the idea of that is becoming less and less popular. Would you agree? Uh, yeah. Well, if I keep it, you know, keep having these discussions every time it's, uh, you know, it's time to start getting some new material together to record another something or other, and then it's, and it always but it's, it seems to be this continuous thing, oh, well, you don't really, you know, these days it's all about singles, you know, you know um, singular songs. So we don't really need to record an album, yet somehow we do and, and still do, and those discussions about, I oh, just do some singles, always slip out. By and the next minute we're planning for an album and working really hard and I don't know whether it's uh, you know, just the old school thing still stuck in the system now you can't you can't just put out one song you got it don't I don't know it, for me I'd, I'd be really I, I can't can't imagine being happy with that uh, me too Ian um, me too and and that's I think know, people you, like that too yeah yeah I I, I would hope that. Um, to people still, you know, because vinyls, I've, I've, I've got my stuff out on vinyl and uh, the thing I hear most of the time, oh, it's great to be able to just, just big piece of, not sort of on a cassette cover or a CD thing where you're um, trying to enlarge yeah. it on Spotify. What yeah, is yeah. the cover there? Is that Rivers or River? I can't see, honey. Let me get closer. <laughs> uh, so um, you find people still – so. In person, people will go, oh, I'm so glad they're holding this vinyl or whatever. And it's like, I'm so glad that this this exists, you know? It's not about not yeah. appreciating the music. It's the album that I find curious. You know, you look at um, just the way digital has um, shifted a lot of industries. And I'm just sort of asking more people about it on the show because I think it's something that it's important to at least just kind of make listeners a little hip to. Not in a scary way, just kind of in a way that says – you know, there's a lot that goes into an album that makes it a work of art, not just, you know, there's the songs on their own, but, you know, you with Rivers Run Dry, you've got a collection of songs from different writers and it came together in this in this really beautiful way, hasn't it? Like it's such a cohesive record and 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 do you feel that when you make a record that you go through a journey yourself that is imprinted on that album? 
Um, well, yeah, I do. And just, I mean, just, you, I think you mentioned the word cohesive, which is, uh, say, with this particular record, the Rivers Run Dry album. Um, <laughs> it's, yeah, Rivers. <laughs> sorry, the sorry, Rivers Run it, Dry album. Was, uh, that, was that a pop in the sound? I'm not sure, was that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, in in that the, the songs actually, to, to truth be known, some some of the uh, these songs have been around for a long time. Wow! Uh, um, but but I, I, I'll, I'll go backwards. What, what's happened is I've ended up with an album full of songs, which are, the, are some really it's, it's variations in styles of song. And the Rivers Run Dry album is, is quite uh, quite immense, quite vast, yeah, yeah. Uh, eclectic, yeah. That, um, you know, state of my emotions, just Latin rock. Um, Bury me is kind of bluegrass. Uh, you know, uh, Malibu plain, uh, country rock, country normal rock. Um, uh, yeah, there's so a hint, there's a hint of the, '80s to me too. There's a hint of like the '80s kind of Robert Cray kind of thing to me in it. I don't know if that was on purpose, but I, but maybe that's just because I love a record like Strong Persuader that I'm going to feel like that because I know it's your style, it's you. Um, yeah, but last, a couple the, of the last the last time is Jeff definitely in that, uh, yeah. that camp, I think. And that's yeah. the thing that the last time uh, that was um, pretty much written in 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 '92. <laughs> yeah right. Um, State of my emotion, which is one I love, and that was a track of myself and Kerry Jacobson, my drummer, current drummer, is the original drummer for Dragon. Um, those ideas uh, that, that started in two thousand, went through many changes, and it was only in just uh, in the last year before we, we sort of finally realised a feel we, we just needed this one part, this bridge part, and that. That came together in about 21. So we finally, it was just like everything was, oh, no, it's not right, it's not right. We just, the years slipped by and we finally feel like we just, that's how long it can take. So you've got songs like that. I mean, Bury Me is quite, quite recent and obviously Rivers Run Dry, the title track is very recent. I'm Going Back, the tr uh, track with Troy. Uh, I had that music going in my head and, uh, and that, that line, just I'm going back to something, to somewhere, whatever, uh, in about, from about 2008. And uh, got so Troy it interested sounds in like, that. Yeah, it, it, sounds so like, it, it sounds like you've just sort of got me hip to something here. And like, it sounds like that with an album, what happens is, you know, a songwriter and, and uh, entertainers, we kind of have these songs that kind of carry around in our bag and you're sort of collecting them whether someone else's or your own. And sometimes it's very clear how they all sort of come together in a cohesive way. Sometimes it's really clear, like, a like, um, what was it? Uh, you know, some like for instance, my my Debo record was called Worried Minds, and it's like a Motown, blue eyed soul kind of record. And it was very clear that that's what I wanted to do. It was kind of okay. Smokey Robinson kind of inspired, and and we got like a wrecking crew kind of unit to make it. And it just that's what it was, and it made sense. But there were songs that kind of didn't necessarily make sense in that collection. It it's just, but they were they were around, but they were saved for other things. So, yeah. but it was. With putting then those songs into the studio with that team, the songs go on a journey and the artist goes on a journey and, and this is the the craft and, and I hope this isn't getting too boring for everybody listening. Like, shut up, go back to Rivers. Um, uh, but uh, it's it's that maybe it's then having the experience of doing the album that allows the real creativity and the art to kind of exist, whereas maybe some modern music practices are getting very, do a single and we can hone in and it's going to be like this for this commercial reason. And it's less about the exploration and it's less about finding something and it's less about going on a journey and it's more of a business kind of decision. And and not to say that you don't pick, that labels haven't always encouraged singles and, and thank goodness they do because we probably wouldn't have Twist and Shout and we wouldn't, probably wouldn't have Satisfaction and, you know, and, or Telephone Booth or, or all this stuff. But 
at some point there's yeah. kind of this this middle middle line, you know what I mean, that kind of is is in the industry. So I don't know. You just kind of got me thinking about that as you were talking about these songs that you've had that maybe you were waiting for Rivers Run Dry, the song to come along to make them all make sense and kind of this idea of an album comes forward and then it's away you go. You're off to the races with this album. Um. Well, I can I can sort of fill in with that. I mean, because. I know what you mean with because even even with Matchbook, um, that was uh, way back in you know, 88, 89. That was um, it. All and it happens a lot. Or even before that, cultures will say with twentieth century up. We'd uh, we'd pretty much finish that and thought uh, and listen, you know, doing the big listen back. So, oh, does anyone else feel like they just need one more special something and? And it was like, yeah, yeah, probably right. Be good, but you know, what's going to be this? That's when Steve, the late great Steve Presswich, who wrote songs like "When the War Is Over," you know, drummer for Cold Chisel, um, yeah, "Forever, Forever Now,", Now. Um, "Best Jinx. Kept Lies," and with this next song, he's the one who said, "Look, I've got, uh, I've got, pretty much got all the music for a, for a song, but I don't have any lyrics." So. Uh, so he picked up an acoustic guitar and Don went, that's, that's Donnie who will, you know, comes to the rescue quite often with the lyrics, but has to like the music he's hearing. He said, that sounds great. Give me, give me a crack at that overnight. Went home, came back the next day. He hadn't slept a wink, but he was just charged. And, and that when you get such a great story as the one I'm about to tell you, he wrote, it, it can have that effect on you. It's so gratifying, such a, uh, up, lifting yeah. high natural high um so he came back with this set of lyrics and went through it and next thing we know we're in the studio and a couple of hours later we had flame trees um that's insane yeah, yeah history speaks for so uh, i did a similar thing with uh the matchbook album so yeah oh, i just need something else and then don said look i've got this one thing i didn't i didn't know if it suit or not but uh what do you think and produce such a beautiful thing which is a pretty Get important out. song on that album. Wow. Um, so yeah, these ones yeah. weren't these; they weren't planned. They were discovered in the process. They were found. They were, you know, yeah. it, it wasn't this obvious kind of uh, one plus one equals two. You know, it, it's one plus one equals two. But then, luckily, you kind of find another number laying around, and that's what gives you seven. That's a really, really bad way. Of <laughs> one plus two equals seven. Thank God! Thank God! I host a podcast, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's um, take a quick break and we'll come back because yeah. uh, I've got some quick fire questions um, and anything else okay. you want to add on to this. We'll take a quick break. <laughs> 